Hi from Peñol de Amoles. This city was not uh, in my list of cities that I wanted to go to. Actually, I pinned it just because uh, it's one of these cities that's high in the clouds where you're kind of above the cloud level, but that's not what we're here to talk about. I got sick, so sick on the bus. And uh, I wanted to tell you the story uh, because I went to the hospital uh, in a small town in Mexico and I want to tell you about my experience. Um, leaving Zalitla, 6.30 in the morning. It's going to be a five-hour bus ride. My goal is to try everything that the bus vendors bring onto the bus. Um, so far, I seem to be the only human being on the bus. Something tells me that will change, although it's time to go. And it's a five hour bus drive and you have to get over the mountains. Uh, in, in, anytime you're kind of trying to get out of Zalitla, you have to get out of the mountains. And to get out of the mountains, it's switchback the whole way. And you know, you're on one of these buses that's top heavy that every time it turns, it's you know, the whole bus is rocking back and forth. Uh, and I remember thinking before I started getting sick, boy, a person of lesser constitution would really have a hard time on this bus. <laughs> uh, but I hadn't really eaten anything all day. I hadn't slept the day before. I couldn't sleep last night. I remember talking to my friend saying, um, it, it, she was asking me how my stomach was doing. And I told her, yeah, I'm a little bit constipated, but it's, yeah, it's, it's manageable. It's not a big deal. And um, so, uh, yeah, it was a 6.30 bus. Nothing's open at 6.30. I had a taxi come and pick me up at, you know, basically there was no chance to get coffee. There was no chance. To, I had a bottle of water with me and that was it. <clears throat> Let's let this guy go by. I definitely don't want any ice cream right now. <laughs> so when I got on the bus, I got on the bus on an empty stomach. I started feeling a little bit sick like in my throat, my throat felt a little dry and I thought, you know what, you better pop some vitamins, you know, just in case you're fighting something off. Well, I'm so smart that I popped a bunch of vitamins on an empty stomach and about an hour later, started getting sick to my stomach. Uh, I threw up, basically I threw up water and what was obviously vitamin B because, you know, it's yellow. And, uh, and then I felt, uh, well, let's just call it the ass volcano coming up, coming on. And I'm in, I'm three hours into a five hour bus ride. And uh, we're stopping along the way at different points. And at this point I had to, I had already thrown up on the bus, trying to do it discreetly. I threw up into my Cuba Boca, my, you know, my mask. And I threw up, uh, it, I, grabbed all the paper I had saved for, you know, for using the restroom for times when there's no toilet paper. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, I got off that bus. Uh, I had to, I had to really explain to the bus driver. It's like, no, you need to get my bags out of the, <laughs> out of the thing. And I need to stay in this city, wherever the hell we are. We need to stay here. And, um, it was like a little, um, I took picture, I took video of it. It was like a little bathroom in a little, shop that had the bus station attached to it. There was kind of three warehouse guys sitting around and I got in that bathroom and I did not get out. And those guys could hear me on the other side of the door moaning and groaning. And uh, they called the cops. And uh, the, a lady cop came. By this time I had, there was a lot that was not in me that was in me, let's say. And I was, sitting on the ground and leaning up against my suitcase. And I just, you know, I didn't care about anything at this point. I left my bags with those guys, those strangers, and just went for the bathroom. And uh, like I say, they called the cops. They were very concerned about me. Uh, the cop called the, I forget what they're called. It's the, they had just sort of a care for people municipality, a key. It's, it's, it's like the, you know, it's the weak care for people uh, agency. I'll probably correct it on the bottom. 
And uh, one of the guys, I think he was one of the managers of the store, or maybe the manager of the little warehouse that I was in. Um, you know, I was trying to get people to talk slowly to me because things were going, moving very fast. And uh, yeah, the guy was like, you know, like they're going to take you to the hospital. I was like, and I said, do I have a choice? And uh, it, and he looked at me and he was like, you don't have a choice. You have to go. And I don't think he meant it as like, we demand you go to the hospital. I think he was saying, you know, please, please go. We want you to go. <laughs> uh, and I, I just wanted to lay down. And, I, and they drove me to the hospital. They, drove, they put me in a truck, drove me to the hospital. Um, I was seen within 10 minutes. They had to, I, I, I went to go use the restroom. They had to pull me out of the restroom to go see the doctor. Like, the doctor's ready to see you now. They did a little, a, a tiny little triage, and boom, I was, in the doc, I was in the office with the doctor. And she kind of went through, you know, what had happened to me. And, uh, you know, I was, it was bad. It was really bad. I was sweating and... You know, going through the cold chills and stuff it was massive. And, uh, you know, crying just because, you know, just the embarrassment of it all and everything. Well, the, the lady doctor, whose name I didn't get, uh, she gave me some Pepto-Bismol. And she was like, I'm sorry, it doesn't taste as good as the real Pepto-Bismol, like I cared. And uh, she gave me some pills. And she also gave me a prescription. And then she drove me to the hotel. She drove me to the hotel and uh, I got in bed, took the medicine, got in bed. And I think maybe 20 minutes later, I don't know, because I was sleeping, the hotel, the hotel manager uh, knocked on my door because the people at the, um, at the little warehouse had called around to ask how I was doing. Um, and uh, I mean, and, and, you know, and then you may, and what was my bill? Nothing. Nobody's asked me for any money at all. Um, so they've given me medicine. They've given me treatment. I mean, I paid for the hotel room, of course. Um, but nobody's asked me for anything at all. And I mean, to call around the city to ask how I'm doing is not something that would happen in the United States at all. Um, after a very long nap, um, I went down to eat lunch at the little place. Basically, I ate bread and a Coca-Cola, um, which, you know, I only drink in times of serious trouble. <laughs> and um, found out that 14 people had been killed in Texas. Um, And I just don't, I just don't think that we care for people enough in the United States. I couldn't believe how much they cared about a stranger. How undismissive they were. How much they insisted that I get help. I know that Mexico has its share of violence. But they're, those people are the outliers. Um... Yeah, I'm just overwhelmed, really, that the doctor put me in her car and drove me to the to a hotel. She drove me by the pharmacy and said, here's where you can get your medication. Uh, so, uh, I just I just wanted to share. <laughs> I probably need another nap. That was my uh, experience in Mexico. Uh, go into the hospital. I, mean, it was, I don't know if it was a hospital or just like a little public clinic. I forgot there is one more thing that I wanted to say and that's um, that the Wi-Fi password, and I'm not going to give away the whole Wi-Fi password, but the Wi-Fi password here is THX1138. <laughs> I needed a chuckle today. <laughs> uh, if y'all don't get that, that was a movie in the 70s that was all about a space age car chase and the best part of the movie was the ending and the rest of it was just car chase THX 1138 I almost died 